So uh, I'm going to tell you about our open source simulation software, Jomsim. It's uh, free open source. Uh, and uh, my uh, uh, co-authors on this paper is Harvey Harrison, who's sitting right here, uh, who's the head programmer for, for, the, for our software development, and Matt Shudley, who did the 3D graphics for the software. Uh, I'll tell you a little bit about, about Asenco, the company we work for. Um, give you a quick introduction to Johnstone, and then I'll do a live demonstration with three examples, which pretty well give you a, a give you a reasonable impression of, of, of what Johnstone's capabilities and how it works. Um, uh, some instructions on how to get it, and then a quick summary. <clears throat> so, Ascentco Engineering is a um, is a um, consultancy based in uh, well, our office is based in Vancouver. The headquarters of the company are in Australia. There are about twenty seven hundred people worldwide. Um, Vancouver is currently the largest office, and for historical reasons, simulation software is done in, in Vancouver. We've got a team of uh, 18 people at the moment working full-time in simulation uh, uh, modeling, and uh, that team con uh, contains uh, three pro uh, four programmers who work full-time in, in the, uh, on the software. Uh, and we've been doing this for about 35 years in total. Um, oh, um, we, uh, we're unusual. In, in the consulting engineering business and that we develop our own, our own software, hence uh, Johnstone. Uh, and the reason for that is that, um, is that the commercial off-the-shelf software um, traditionally has not worked very well with our application, which is, which is uh, supply chains for the uh, mining and oil and gas industry. So railways, shipping, ports, um, 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 marine access to ports, um, pipelines, conveyors and, so, and so forth, uh, it, it's, it traditionally has not been a very good fit, and we've had to write a lot of software ourselves, so we, eventually, about 10 years ago, we decided that we were just going to do it from scratch. Uh, in the past, we had used off-the-shelf software, but in the end, we'd only really just used the timekeeping portion of it, and in the end, we decided it would be just easier to do the timekeeping ourselves. Uh, we licensed our software to the oil and gas industry, and it's, it's I like to think, an industry standard for, for, uh, 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 for that, for doing uh, Ports and terminals. Um, so why open source software? Um, uh, you know, commercial software is very good, and it's very, very good at what it's designed to do. The only problem is it's not very good at things that it wasn't designed to do. The ability to extend uh, commercial off-the-shelf software is pretty limited. Um, they all provide you with some sort of uh, uh, programming, you know, uh, um, language or programming like like language to use, but it's it's proprietary. Um, pretty limited, tiny user base compared to C or Java or any other program, programming language, and that has a lot of limitations. The typical scenario is that you're, you're, um, you're, you can build about 90% of your model uh, really easily and quickly in, in the commercial off-the-shelf software, and then that last 10%, which you've got to have, it's, 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 it's essential features, doesn't fit that software very well, and you spend the rest of your life trying to get that last 10% uh, into the software and tie yourself in the knots in the process. So here's what our, our, our software uh, looks like. And the basic components are as follows. We've got a control panel up here for, for launching uh, and controlling the runs, um, uh, a drag and drop palette uh, so you can drag things on and dro uh, drop them into the, into the uh, main window, um, uh, an object selector down here, which tells you what's in your model so far and allows you to select those objects, input, editor, and output viewer down here. And there are a few other tools as, as well, but those are the basic parts. Oh, and finally, um, uh, a window showing a 3D view of your model universe. Uh, you can have multiple uh, uh, windows, uh, uh, 3D views as well. And the funny name, JOMSIM, stands for Java Animation Modeling and Simulation. And it also is a, a, a bleak reference to a JOM, which is a magical cup from Persian mythology. So you have this, this bowl that you look into and you can see, you can see the, 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 the world going on in it. I think I think it was actually originally an astronomical device showing uh, showing the sky and the positions of stars and constellations. But they're said to reveal the deep, deep truths somehow uh, 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 resonating with me. Okay, so now I'm going to move to, to the live demo. Um, I'm going to give you a quick tour of the, of the graphical user interface and show you three examples which, are, which illustrate the software. And if there's time, I'll show you a couple of, a couple of extra uh, uh, demos here. 
So let me launch it. So actually, I've cheated here. I've already launched it. So here's what I showed you. Here's the, the, the control panel, the, um, uh, the model builder for drag and drop, the object selector, the view, input editor, and output viewer. So, so, um, so what does that look like? Um, the basic graphical object in Johnson is called a display entity. You just drag and drop that onto the screen here. And in the process of doing that, you, you can see that that object's now been entered into the object selector there so that, that we can access it uh, uh, through there in case you, you, uh, we hide it or, or it's not displayed on the screen. Um, and, and there are things like text you can put in, um, uh, you can put anything like graphs. And we can, we're in a perspective view right now, but show this in, in, a, in a, just a top-down view. And of course, you can resize things. Uh, and uh, do, do the usual things on this. Um, the, um, the input editor, uh, well, actually, let's, uh, pardon me, let's, let's look at a more non trivial object here. So let's, let's look at the good old um, uh, server here. So the, 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 let's look at the input to the server. Um, so we see down here, um, and uh, we, we've uh, divided up the, the inputs into to, to some basic inputs, for, uh, key inputs, and, and some graphical inputs. The key inputs are just, just what does this, this object connect to next, what service time is, and, and, and what queue does it use for, for waiting, simple as that. Um, and if you're a little vague on what those inputs mean, if you, if you mouse over them, you've got a pop-up. Which, which will give you a brief definition and an example of, of, of how, how the inputs look for it. On the output side, um, you, you, um, we're, we automat gener automatically generate some outputs and display them down here, some number of, of object process and, and, and so on. And again, if you bounce over those outputs, um, you'll get a pop-up describing what they do. So now, now let's look at a, at a real model. And let's see. So here's your, your mandatory server and queue model. We're generating entities over here. They're, the entities are copies of, of this guy over here, this here. We move along a conveyor into a server, into a queue, and then back out again to, to a sink. So it's, it's the most trivial queuing model you can, you can have. And when we run this, um, we see, we see our, our, our spheres going along that are being created and, and queuing and so forth. We can control the execution speed with this little spinner here. And uh, one thing to notice is that we can slow this down um, as, as much as we like, and the motion is still smooth. We're, we're, we're the, um, the graphics are being generated you know, um, uh, uh, frame by frame, so every time the frame is refreshed, it's calculating where at that clock, wall clock time should that object be on the conveyor. So, so you, get, you get a perfectly smooth motion that way. And you're only limited by the frame rate your, your graphics card can produce. And the other thing is that uh, even when this thing is running along nicely. There's no problem with uh, manipulating it. Um, the, uh, you know, the, 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 graph, the, the, the graphics are running on a separate thread, so they're actually running on a separate core in your computer, so they don't have a, that, that much of an impact on, on execution speed. Um, you get maybe a 20% drop in execution speed when you turn the graphics on. Okay, so let's, um, so let's look at the um, some of the outputs here. Um, let's just look at the um, at the queue. So there's some basic statistics on the on the queue. Um, just as an example, so we're getting uh, um, the, the the present length of the queue, the average length of the queue, uh, uh, the average queue time, um, uh, numbers of added, numbers of numbers removed, and you'll see as we run this thing that those numbers get updated um, continuously as the simulation runs. And even, um, 
And even between events, these are being updated. For example, utilization, um, even though no events have happened as, uh, as, as clock time, time advances, uh, we're always recalculating them based on, on the, the present total lapse time model. So you're always guaranteed that these values are fresh, um, and at the end of the run, uh, um, you don't need to do some final update, some last event to, to give you the current value, which, would, which in the, in the bad, bad old days of our software uh, used to be the case. And we were glad to get rid of. Okay, let's um, let's um, um, let's see. Uh, oh yeah, so a, a few other things about this. Um, so we show that the, the, the sphere is moving smoothly along the conveyor, um, but there really just two, just to remind you, there are really only two events here. There's an event when the when the sphere enters the conveyor, and there's an event when it leaves the conveyor. There's no in, events in between. All that's being done just by the by, by the graphics and interpolation. Uh, the other thing is that this looks like your basic um, uh, process flow type type uh, uh, simulation model. Um, you know, we've got things being generated, moved along here, processed here, and then and then processed some more. But these are in fact agents. They just happen to be linked. The agents just have to be linked together to make a process flow. There's nothing. There's no process flow that's an element of, of, of the of the simulation software. So so you know the traditional. Um, uh, process flow type models that most of the simulation software sort of focus on are actually a subset of simulation models in general, which is the, the agent model is the, is the general case, the process flow is a subset. <clears throat> so let's look, open a, uh, another model. This one's a bit different. This is a, uh, this is a continuous type model. We're, we're solving the differential equations for, or the integral equations for a harmonic oscillator. So we've got, um, we, we've got two, two integrators here, integrating a signal and acceleration to the velocity and integrating velocity to give you a position, then feeding that back again to a weighted sum to give you your acceleration again. So it's a classic um, damped harmonic oscillator. And uh, again, these, are just these things are just agents. Um, there's nothing in here that that, that suggests that this arrow, this arrow isn't significant in any way, just as a, a graphical object linking them together. <clears throat> so, so I'm sorry, what is an agent? So like the integrator is an agent? So everything is an agent. So, so the, the, this is an agent, these are agents. Um, the, the, the clock, the timing clock is an agent. You know, the, the, there's nothing in here that makes any one object different or special compared to another object. They're all, they're all uh, demo, it's democratic. Everybody's even the graph is, is is an agent. They're all they're all democratic objects. Nobody's special. <clears throat> so um, so let's let some, so you see we're displaying some numbers on the screen here, and the uh, how we do that is interesting. Um, let's just move my center a bit. So we're um, we're linking a model output here. So the, the acceleration weighted sum is that is that weighted sum object we saw on the screen. Um, this guy, this guy here, and we're saying take uh, um, take his output, um, which has a uh, has a pro uh, an output called called value, and 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 graph that, or at least display that. And the the format in which to display it is is entered by this string here. Which is which is, is which, which is a Java standard Java format string, which you can put anyone in there, and this is the way of, of giving you formatting flexibility um, without having creating some new uh, new syntax. Um, and the graph works in, in, in the same way that that we're taking we're graphing outputs. So in this case, uh, we're graphing the uh, position integrator. Uh, uh, this guy here, um, his output value uh, on the on the one axis, on the primary axis, and the velocity integrator on the secondary axis. Okay, now let's look at our third model. I advertised that there were going to be three simple models, and this is the simplest of the bunch. This one's just, just a, some 3D graphics, so uh, it's a little model of a Ferrari Daytona sports car from the uh, from, from uh, uh, the, the the Trimble 3D warehouse, and it, it's actually a pretty decent model. Um, oops, you can, uh, 
And it, it, you know, we've, we've actually got some quite nice uh, 3D controls in this. And in fact, the, um, we can display um, extremely complex um, uh, graphics with this software. Um, when, I, when I hired Matt Chudley to, to build us a 3D graphics engine, um, I, I was more in, uh, interested in getting something that would produce decent 3D graphics and would be stable. Um, uh, he went away and wrote me something that was, did all that and was extremely fast and, and lightweight. Um, and we've been importing very complicated engineering um, scenes uh, from, from CAD drawings. Uh, the most complicated one uh, that we've done to date is about, about 5 million, um, 5 million uh, polygons, which is enough to choke, um, choke um, 3ds Max on anything but, but a really expensive computer. And our, our software runs at 30 frames a second, and you can do continuous fly through. So, so it's actually quite useful as a 3D viewer as well as a, a simulator. And our objective here is, is the, the standard uh, um, engineering uh, simulations you see, the, anim the uh, video clips you see, um, what do you call it, um, uh, animations, uh, they're usually done with 3ds Max. Um, it also always bothered me that those are done with graphics software, not with simulation software. We want to be able to do those in simulation. And we're quite happy to do so just do dumb animations. Then the, the simulation, the, the smarts, the logic, becomes an add-on to the graphics. No, you know, trying to, if you build a simple uh, uh, um, flow, sh flow sheet type model uh, for the logic, and they say, oh, well, we can make this beautiful and add-on 3D graphics, that's a tough sell. Uh, if you start out with the 3D graphics and say, and build a beautiful demo, uh, and then tell you we can add on the, the simulation logic to it, that's much easier to sell. So, um, I think I've got a little bit, we just got time to show you, show you a couple more, more things here. Uh, this is, um, this is a non-trivial model. Uh, for a uh, uh, for a cafe, and so we're, we're generating customers over here. Some of them want sandwiches. There's resources being seized and releases, uh, and some people want tables. So there's a you, you wait for a table, you wait for a waitress, uh, you you then go to the checkout and, and, and so on. It's, it's your basic textbook type type simulation model, but it, it gives you um, an idea of, of that we're able to do more more sophisticated stuff. So this is, this is, these sort of models are the sort of classic simulation software examples you see in textbooks and in, in software demonstrations like this. Um, we didn't build the software to do this. Um, we, we've done this just to, to make the software more accessible to, to the typical, typical users who want to build simple models um, easily. The software is really designed to do very complicated models, uh, which is what we use to do in our, our consulting work. And, um, we, we, we built in the palettes of basic objects and, and the uh, drag and drop interface to, to make the software more accessible. Um, the, the type of models we normally build, you have to build directly in the input file, uh, which is a, like a declarative programming language. You define objects, you give them properties, <coughs> and so on. And uh, <coughs> we, so we've added on the, the, uh, the graphical user interface sort of after the fact without making sure we don't do anything that's going to make the take away from our ability to, to design complicated models using, using the input files. An uh, example of a really complicated model um, we did recently was a, a, was a pipeline um, reliability model where, where there's a, f a 4,000 kilometer long pipeline. In fact, I can, if I can show that to you here. Let's So this is, this is a 4,000 kilometer long pipeline from Alberta to the uh, east coast of Canada uh, that's been in, on the drawing board. And uh, there are 70 some odd pump stations along the way. Each pump station has four or five pumps in it. Um, and each pump has about 40 failure modes. And the stations themselves have failure modes and the pipeline has failure modes. All in total, there are, there are 19,000 failure modes for this model uh, and a grand total of 30,000 components in it. So just building, you're obviously not going to build this by drag and drop. Um, uh, even just building it through the input file, something as large as 30,000 uh, uh, entries is, 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 is no small feat. And I was quite impressed by one of my young analysts who, who, who knocked that off in a couple of days, days uh, in Excel. Um, 
so this, this model, uh, as I say, it's got 30,000 components in it. We were running it for 10 years of simulated time, and it, which took about 45 minutes on a, on a typical uh, PC computer. So this is more what we, what we have in mind with the software. Um, the other thing that's, that's special about it is you're not limited to just the, the objects we've created uh, uh, built into the software to your palettes. Um, we want you to go and build your own palettes of high-level objects for your own applications so that you can build complex models that are more suited for, for what you want to model. Because you're doing healthcare, make, make your make the, the pretty objects for nurses and doctors and operating theaters and, and triage and so on. Drag and drop those high-level objects on the screen and connect them up. And that's, that's yeah, uh, or, or any other application. Uh, that's, that's the way to build complicated models. And we've given you the tools to do it. You know, you know, that's by far easier than building user interfaces and input-output routines and so on. So um, let's uh, uh, come to a conclusion here. You can download the software from our website. Guess what? Johnson.com. Um, you can download a 32-bit version or a 64-bit version for, for the PC. Uh, if, you, um, uh, if you email us, we'll give you a jar file for, uh, for that can run on, on Linux or, or, uh, or, um, or Mac. Uh, the software is a, a grand total of six megabytes in one file. So it's, off, it's not like installing typical simulation software, which usually involves hundreds of files and hundreds of folders and hundreds of megabytes. This thing is really compact. And uh, uh, along with the uh, examples and the software you can download as well, you can also download the user manuals for the software. We actually have them. Uh, so there's a, there's a user man manual intended for, for this user interface. And there's also a programming manual for people who want to build their own palettes and objects. So to summarize, unlike, you know, there's a lot of open source software out there. Um, the, all the other simulation software for the, uh, the screen and field is are libraries of tools. Sometimes they're very good libraries of tools, but they're not a complete not a complete application. You'd have to spend months of programming your uh, the rest of the framework uh, to use those those tools. We've actually gone and, and and made a proper application out of this, and and there's about ten man years of of, of development time in, in the software. So it's it's a pretty substantial piece of effort. Uh, the model has, has built-in uh, palettes of standard objects, servers, queues, resources, and, and so on. And, but the most really important thing is you can make your own uh, palettes of, of specialized objects. And those things will automatically have all of the input and output functions, the pop-ups, um, the editors, the drag-and-drop capability are very easy to implement uh, for your own set of objects. That's by far the easiest part of, uh, of the software. Um, so some, some great features of the software. So not just a uh, pretty face. It's uh, it's the self-documenting inputs. Outputs are great. Uh, physical units. Everything has has units in, in the software. I didn't show that in the input editor, but if you're if you're ending a time, it'll have it'll have units of seconds or minutes or hours or fortnights or whatever you what you want to enter it in. And those units are mandatory, so you're not going to make mistakes of oh that input was in meters. I thought it was in feet. Um, uh, you've uh, it, the software is scalable to extremely complex models. You're not limited to just simple uh, drag and drop models. You can build anything you want. Um, we've got very high performance 3D graphics thanks to Matt Chudley, and it's extremely lightweight. So installing it is, it is no big deal. So, so there's no excuse not to try it. And that's the end of my presentation. Thank you very much. Okay. Let's do this do we have any questions? So the, uh, the uh, objects you showed us were linked. They were using sort of networks and lines, and they were following. Can they interact in free space as well? Oh yeah, the graphics are are, are, are you could have those all piled on top of each other. The, the the graphical appearance has nothing to do with the logic. We've been very careful to do that to separate those two. Yes. Uh, you mentioned classification matrices. Yes. So, uh, so a little, little bit of history here. This tool started out. Um, well, I won't give the whole story, but but uh, it, this it, the, this tool started out as being about a 250,000 line application for the oil and gas industry, uh, um, and uh, uh, as we were developing it, uh, we decided that we would take the the generic part of the user interface, the the um, uh, uh, 
uh, the graphics, um, you know, all, the, all of the basic tools that are generic, pull those out of the application, make those separate. And, and that's how Jocelyn came into, into life. Our, our, our big application now is, is a, a, a collection of palettes of objects that live in the, the John Tink framework. Just the same that you, just the same as, as what you would do if you built your own set of palettes. Okay, I have a question as sure. well. Um, I'm wondering about the open source. What, what's the response from the user? Are they taking it on? Do you see a lot of development going on? Well, the software has been open source for two years now. Um, we have not promoted it until recently. Uh, it, it sort of uh, launch was at Widerson this year in, in December. Um, and that was when we brought up the website and everything. Um, we, we felt that it was now at the point where, where, where you know, there was enough there that people could use it and evaluate it. Um, prior to that, it was, it was a bit, you know, it wasn't really suitable for people to try out very effectively. 